Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for the final episode of Series 1 of our Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 uh, run and stream and videos and you know, you know, you know how the things work on this channel. So yes, I, I call it that because we've decided to draw a bit of a line here at having done all of the early space sciences and call that series one and then that means immediately after almost immediately afterwards we're going to start off with series two but i'll talk about that a bit more in a, in a moment or two because first we've got the um the update from mark and mike to run through so we're going to start off with a um mark has set up a cunning system to ensure that the ore that is brought to the uh, the new smeltery over here and this is this is the one that work, works off um vulcanite and and, and pyro, sorry pyroflux and, and and such like so we're bringing in pyroflux to the station here and yada 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 and that means we're able to make the uh, the ingots that i was talking about yesterday and these are the ones that are being shipped up to space and we're getting through quite a bit of steel by the looks of it so that's good i guess but what I want to talk about first is how he set up prioritization here. Because as I think I've hinted at in previous videos, we now have two or maybe yeah, two different tiers of places that are making ores, to what should we say? So firstly, we've the, the high priority stuff, the stuff we want to use use first and by choice is everything that comes out of this core processing here because this is all free completely free resources we don't have to dig any well i was gonna say we don't have to dig any of this up out of the ground we do but it comes out of these unlimited uh, core seams rather than coming out of mines which will eventually run out and this means that there's we want to use this stuff up first because well, for, for several reasons. Firstly, because it means when, when this this one will never run out, whereas the normal mines like these ones will eventually run out. As you can see, we're down to forty-five thousand here, and this one has actually run out. So um, this need will need to be dealt with and disposed of, and we'll need to go out and find new iron mines to replace these. Whereas these ones will just keep going forever. So the the uh, the resources that come out of these are completely unlimited. And the other reason is because if we did stop using the iron ore from here eventually everything all of the these warehouses would fill up it would fill up all the way back here this would fill up and then the whole thing would grind to a halt and we'd lose all of our other free resources so we need to make sure that this keeps flowing and the only place we've re had a real problem with that so far has been the uh, the rare metals because we th that comes out at quite a rate and yet we're not using it for anything at all we're not we're hardly using the rare metals we need them for blue circuits and I think that's about it. So um, then they're not getting, we're not getting through those, anything like the rate we're producing them. And so we are just simply turning all of the excess into landfill. And we have 4,200 landfill here, which is um, getting on for being a full box. So that's a, that's a concern. But we do also have an additional overflow down here where it can go into these, all of these boxes down here. And we've been, in theory, not using this for. Um, uh, for the rare metals because there's so much of it. But I think we may end up having to. So. Um, I'm not sure how this is all. Sp oh no, this is this is just set up to pull out the, uh, the rare metals here. Yeah. So so down here we can also pull this out, and, and here we have another machine that will make it into in, into landfill. But I'm not sure this this system is going to be fast enough. Uh, we may need to put in additional storage space over here. But anyway, that's a problem for another time um, because it is currently still working. So what I want what I want to talk about today, and the uh, the thing I'm sort of prevaricating around as I uh, as I get a little bit distracted. Is that all of that all of that iron ore that comes from there is now being put into this um, into this station here because it used to be that it was smelted over here into iron and steel but we're not doing that here anymore because we've moved it elsewhere so that means we need to take it away and deal with it and so the way this works is we've got a station here that's called iron ore Pri prio for priority and if we look at one of the trains for this you can see the train goes from iron ore priority to iron smeltery priority which is this station here right next to the smeltery so let's go out and look on the map view because that'll allow me to wave at things a bit more effectively. So those the trains that are doing the priority run will come down here. They'll they'll fill up from here whenever it's possible. Then they'll come up here and they'll uh, they'll join the, the queue here in these in these three uh, stackers. And that means that when this system down here calls for iron ore, if there's a train here with iron ore in it, that's guaranteed to be the closest one. Because look, it's right there. It's, it's really, really close. And because without LTN, Factorio always gets the train that's closest um, by amount of rail distance it has to cover with all kinds of complications in here. But never mind that. Look in the wiki if you want to know more. <laughs> the, um, the train, it will always call on a train that's waiting in this stacker. So this train will immediately swoop down here, come in here to, to pick, and, and come in here to drop off its iron ore. If there isn't a train available here, then it will go off and use a lower priority train, perhaps the one from the one from over here, from this from this mine, or any other iron mines that we might have, like like this one over here. So there's a tra there's a train over here as well, and these are therefore lower priority trains. So we'll always have we'll always call in a train, but it will choose one of the ones that's using the priority stuff first. 
And also to keep things running oh, running nicely here, there's also then a, um, a priority waiting for pickup uh, station, which is over over here. This one's this one's far more arbitrary. So the trains can then come over here and wait until there's a pri and, until there's a, a priority station that has some stuff to be picked up. So it's just some, somewhere to keep them so they don't jam the system up over here. So the idea is that this is, this will allow us to make sure we use the um, the high priority iron ore first. And I said that's coming from the core mining. It's also coming from the uranium processing, if I have a chance of finding that. Here it is over here. So when you process uranium, of which we have none at the moment, this may be a problem later, but at the moment, um, I don't know. We're not using it particularly quickly. We have 128. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> we have a train full and then approximately none. So we, we might need to look into uranium in the future. But there is also, presumably this is also a priority station, it is a priority station, so there's another priority station here. So when this gets up to being a full train load, and it's only at 3,400 at the moment, so it's not there yet. But when it does, a train will immediately charge over here, grab that iron ore, and take it off up here to sit and um, wait at the iron smeltery priority, priority station. Because that mean, because we don't want this to fill up. Because if this fills up, again, it'll flow back up here. Everything will jam and we'll stop getting uranium. Now, I accept there's a certain irony to me saying we'll stop getting uranium when we're actually not getting any uranium at the moment. But that's another thing on the to-do list. We did have a uranium mine in about, I think it was about here. Um, as you can see, that has gone. Somebody has gone in and tidied up and removed all the drills and things. Um, over here, and there is a station over here that has basically none left in it. There's the and there's a train that has 3,000 actually. That's not too bad. Let's send that over to uranium drop off, and it can empty out. It can empty it out there. Uh, this uranium mine then needs to be turned off and just generally deactivated, uh, like that. Uh, no, not like that. I. Uh, I don't know. We'll let it drop it off and come back and sit here again. It doesn't matter. Well, with that, that's something we need to do. But yes, so we now have we have priority priority systems that are making sure we use up the correct ores first. And I actually I really like this system because it's 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 very simple and just def and therefore very very elegant because it's not messing you're not messing around with any circuit conditions or anything complicated like that where I stare at it for half an hour scratching my head trying to work out what earth is going on with it it's just dead simple you put a stopping station in right next to the unloading station and then the trains are going to come here first and then get before they go over to unload it's just so simple i, I yeah I, I i really like that and here's a priority train as well so you see we're actually presumably we're de we were demanding two trains uh it's down to zero now um so this well no we weren't so presumably this this train wasn't full when that one was summoned so we got the, we got the train in that's presumably come from a mine yes it has and it's now going back off to find a mine to reload but we've now got a priority train waiting here so next time this starts to run a bit low we'll end up using this train instead I'm slightly surprised at how slow the steel ingots are coming through. This might be because we're trying to top up the supply of other stuff. Like, yeah, a lot, a lot as you see here, a lot of the steel is going through here to be chopped up into plates because we still have a lot of areas that are requesting plates. Um, <clears throat> although that said... Oh, it's because we're filling these warehouses up. That's probably a little bit unnecessary now, especially now that we've moved off to doing most of the um, plate... Most most of the steel usage is going to be in, is in space, I believe, and that's all being done but shipped out by in the in the ingot form now. So, to be honest, this system here probably slightly less necessary, but I suppose it's a, it's a storage of of the of, the, uh, of it all anyway. We could we could put limits in on. We should definitely put a limit in on this one, because um, otherwise it's going to be crazy amounts. And we could copy that across the other ones, and that'll stop and that'll immediately stop everything running, as you can see there. Uh, these will all back up very quickly. This will fairly quickly back, back up across there, back up along here, and then we'll stop taking the ingots from here. That said, I mean, we're not exactly pulling the ingots through fast here. The, the Most of them are still making, well, at least half of them are still making it through to the um, to the warehouses down here and filling up the station. And there's 94,000 in here, so we're not exactly short of it. So I think, despite the fact that this steel belt looks fairly empty, the amount that's coming through is pretty good. We're pretty satisfied around here. I don't think it's actually a concern. We probably don't need to go around and faff around with the limits on these stations. We'll decide whether we should later, but we don't have to. Because this is quite a big smeltery area. And as you can see, it's all being kept fully satisfied. These belts aren't running flat out. That means these systems are, well, satisfied. Up here... Well, I don't know. There's, um, Yeah, this, this iron belt is most... The molten iron pipe is mostly... And the coke is making it all the way up to the ends of the belt, so these machines are running. So, yeah, this seems to be just nicely balanced, and we're producing lots and lots of um, lots and lots of steel. Now it's, it's going at um, well, it's going at a rate. Uh, I think 
we've, we've got this mostly full of productivity modules. I think this is one of those areas that, in the last video, I was talking about how we've now got beacons. This is one of those areas that would really benefit from beacons, because we can come in and we can put beacons in up the side of here, up, up probably up. It had, they'd probably have to go up both sides of here, I suspect. Um, and then just get all, and then these could be filled up with tier three productivity modules if once we can afford them. And then we'll just get a much, much higher productivity level on this. So instead of getting a productivity of plus 24%, we get up to, well, the one extra module here will get us up to 30%. And then I suspect the tier 4s will get us up to about 48% probably. So this is 8% per, so it would be 40% productivity with 5 modules in there then. Okay, so that is a significant boost from the 30 we could potentially get with the tier 2s. So I think once we can afford those modules, that's going to, this is going to be a good place to, to put in that sort of upgrade. However, it might be a while until we, until we can. So what's interesting here is you can note the um, the iron um, ingot production has actually ground to a halt here. Um, now there's actually quite a bit of space on this belt, so this is probably this probably should be using splitters rather than just side loading, um, because that would allow us to get more flowing through. Um, and it's the same again here, just just to get the, th the throughput up that little bit, little bit higher. But to be honest, it's producing enough. I don't think it's actually a problem. Um, so I'm not I'm not too worried about that, but we, it could be tweaked a little bit to make it slightly better. So yeah, this is this is producing all of the um, the iron and the, and the steel we need. It's doing it as fast as we need it. This one, has, as you can see, is full now. This one is now full because I put in those extra rules, so we're getting slightly more flowing through into here, and yeah, filling up filling up the stations. So that's going really well, I would say. Um, you may you may hopefully remember that um, down in the in the core crushing area, we found there were some there were some problems. All of this had ground to a halt and stopped, and it turned out it had stopped because this water tank had filled up because there was only one flare stack getting rid of the getting rid of the water in a sort of a squirty squirty water vapory way. I call these squirty towers in the stream, and apparently the name is, might might be going to stick, uh, which is possibly a little unfortunate. Um, but yes, the problem was that this 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 tank filled up completely with water that caused problems. Um, and so we needed to we need to have a system here that pumps out a bit faster in order to keep the, uh, the 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 overflow from these under control. And that has been done by the simple expedient of putting in an additional eight uh, squirty towers. So we're now down to we're now getting rid of that as quickly as we need to. And it looks like two would have been absolutely sufficient. But you know, there's no such thing as overkill. Only open fire and time to reload. So I think it's good to have more in there than we actually strictly need. And it's working. So definitely no complaints there from me. And that means we now have this. Nice steady flow coming out here. None of the and none of these belts are full. You'll notice, which me, which is a, actually a good. It's a good thing from keeping the system running properly because it means we're not going to have any um, backlog problems. Um, so there's gaps on them that tell us we've got a little bit more space available. Even this one that's struggling a little bit is yeah, is getting through. Is all of the ore is being removed before the next clump of it com, clump of it comes along. So yeah, we are keep we are keeping up here just. But the more important thing, actually, is telling us whether we're keeping up or not, is the fact that this warehouse down here is empty. All these belts are flowing merrily. It's all, there's no there's no clog up happening down here. So to be honest, if one of these belts was completely jammed up and some of these machines had stopped working, as long as we're still getting through the core fragments that were coming in as fast as they're coming in, I wouldn't actually care because it would mean that the system was was happy, everything was running nicely. Um, and just because one particular stack might have had, might be having issues wouldn't actually matter. Um, so yeah, it, this is the system is the system is fine. We're run, we're using up the uh, the resources fast it's coming in. So yeah, we're we're very happy with that, and it's producing as stated lots and lots of free stuff. So I wouldn't like to say what proportion of our um, throughput is being generated from the uh, from the, from the core mine core, uh, core fragment processing because I don't know where to find those numbers. We can look in the uh, production graphs in, in here. Well, actually, I could look up. Um, core fragments and I could see that in the last hour we've produced um, 258,000 core fragments and each one of those gets turned into a certain number of iron ore and copper ore and so on ores um, although some of them are going to be on other planets but actually you know we look at that production there so um, looking at looking at this for every 20 core fragments you produce eight copper core copper ores uh, so we're producing and and same number of iron, yeah, same number of iron and stone and raw rare metals as fact. That's why we've got so much rare metal because we produce it at the same rate as everything else. So it's a little bit less than half. It's 40 40 percent, but we're then boosting that by 24 percent, which means it's probably about um, a half of it. So half. So every core fragment that's processed, we're getting out. Um, so for every two core fragments that's processed, we're getting out an iron ore, a copper ore, and so on and so on. So now if we go back to the production graph over here. 
and look up let's look up ore because that should cover core and ore so we're making uh, 258,000 core fragments or 257 now apparently or 4.3 thousand per minute so we, we should produce potentially from that we are producing about 2.15 thousand per minute of each of those ores and we're using 12,000 a minute so so we're producing about slightly more than a sixth um, of the of the of the uh, of the copper that we're, we're, we're you getting through um, and what did I say 2.4 and just under half of the iron so I mean it's not as, as much of it as I was sort of hoping but it's not doing too badly it's um, I mean half of the iron coming from an un, from a uh, unlimited resource is quite good I guess <laughs> it's not quite as much as I was hoping but it's not doing too badly um, so let's look up stone as well out of curiosity that's three that's 5.9 per minute 5,000 per minute so again a bit less than half and r raw rare metal we're producing 14 we're producing 241 per minute that doesn't add up um, because oh no it's this one isn't it that, yeah, this one, 2.2 thousand per minute. So there we go. That's this. This is all coming from the um, from the, from the core mining. So so my head, my 2.15 was actually pretty damn close. Pleased with that, because um, that's almost that's basically spot on um, for top for top of my head math. So I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, we're producing producing at that at that rate, and um, and the other ones. So that's 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 the one that's completely surplus. But the other the other ones we're producing. So we're producing about a sixth of the copper, about a, about half of the iron, and about half of the stone. Just a bit, a little bit under. So. I mean, it's not bad, but it does tell us that we need to double the uh, the throughput of this core, these core fragments to satisfy our current requirements of iron and stone. Actually, slightly more than double, and we probably need to go off to a copper planet. This is what I did in my in my last run. Uh, flags, okay. Um, I went off to a copper planet and started bringing in, and we don't ooh, we don't have a copper planet in the system. Okay, so in Kalidus orbit, we do not have a copper planet by the looks of it. That's that's a shame. Uh, we do have an iron planet, but you don't need as much iron. That's 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 a shame. In my last run, I had a dedicated copper planet, so I was, I was a, 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 cop, a planet that had copper as its speciality. So it was pulling in. Ma I was able to pull up massive quantities of copper from the core mining on there to the extent that I even had to put in a system to tell the spaceship not to arrive unless there was enough space in the copper storage area to um, to deal with it all. Unfortunately, we don't seem to have a copper planet this time, and that's that's actually quite quite annoying because copper is the thing that we get through in massive massive quantities so um yeah i'm not sure what we're going to do about that i was that was sort of my backup plan for bringing in the, sh the sheer quantities of copper we're going to need we might even need to go and get it from somewhere outside the system which is a real shame because that's a, that's a, that's a real pain to deal with and now some of these other planets will probably have some copper that one doesn't um there's a bit of copper there, but that's a really small planet. And but the thing is, even if I find one of these that has a decent amount of copper on it, um, it's not going to. It's not actually really going to help significantly because we'd need to go out there and put in mining drills. So I mean, it, we we could we could do that. We could go out and dig up copper on another one of these planets if I find one that actually has a decent amount there. But it wouldn't really solve the problem because what I really wanted to do was shove in something that would be able to core uh, core mine the copper up because that's far more valuable. Now it's. I, and yeah, we, and we've launched enough rockets now that we we know that there are um, that, there, that there aren't any other, any other planets in this system. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll have to come out to Snowdrop and mine the copper here. But that's going to be a real pain because it's there's just there's not that much of it. And as I said, it requires actually putting down mining patches. And so that's not really any better than doing it on Norbis. Well, it's a little bit better than doing it on Norbis because there might be better patches and we might not have there might not be biters. So exploration out there might be easier. But it's still it's not ideal. Um, so that's. Yeah, that's going to be a problem later on, I suspect. We're going to need to um, be quite cunning to get around that one. Uh, that's a shame. Okay, so that's uh, that's the second thing Mark's done. Um, he's finished expanding the uh, the power production up here. So we've got so before we had this area of power generation down here, which was generating quite a lot of power and quite a lot of noise and quite a lot of pollution. Up here, we've got an expansion to the same. So this is the same general idea. It's a slightly different format of it, as you can tell by the way. It's a different shape. But we've got so we've gone from down here where we had. Uh, let's let's find out. We had um, bum, 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 four four hundred and fifty um, machines there making the uh, make, make it, uh, making power. This new one, this expanded version, is now up to. Another 792. So it's not quite double, but it's it's not it's, it's not far off. So if we have a look at the power graphs, we'll see that our um, 
capabilities gone from we were at about 2.2 gigawatts available before and you can see why that was a problem uh, we've now got 5.7 so yeah it's uh, like more than two and a half times the amount of power available so that's going to keep us fine for a while however somebody did point out something quite interesting in the in the comments of one of the videos if i go in here and look at the evolution um, we can see that we have still have a 75% of our um, of the biter revolution out there has been caused by pollution, and it turns out that's because Factorio um, counts pollution when it's released and not when it's sort of absorbed or used up or free. And absorbing the pollution again with the um, purifiers stops the biter attacks, but it doesn't stop the evolution because all of this is still getting released into the atmosphere. So the game still counts it towards the evolution. It just doesn't count it, to, but but uh, we're, we're only cleaning it up along here and sort of somewhere in the middle of here probably or maybe not even no we're just cleaning it up along the top side here um we're cleaning it up here before it gets out to the biters so the biters don't attack but it still as i say still counts towards their evolution so we're probably um i was gonna say we're probably get yeah we so we are still we're already getting green biters now um the ones with a huge huge amounts of health and the, the ones that are actually quite difficult to stop so that's is a, is a thing um it just sell a V really um, but what can you do I mean we we need the power we could have put down massive areas of solar and nuclear and stuff like that which would have been a bit cleaner um, but this is kind of easier oh it looks like we need a bit more pollution gathering in down here because uh, yes the belt runs through here but doesn't appear to gather any um, any any pollution um, so that needs it that needs that needs finishing off the other thing uh, Mark has been doing is pushing the boundaries of our um, our territory way out up here. Um, he's possibly yeah he's got, possibly gone out looking for copper mines like this and and, and this this patch over here and so on. Uh, so that's going to help with the copper the copper supply problems um, quite quite a bit. He's not cleaned this. One. Well, actually, yeah he, okay he's he's putting the cleaners around it. It's just he didn't put them in straight away, so a bit of pollution has drifted out. But I mean it's in a desert, so it's going to go quite a long way before it gets absorbed. But meh, worst case we get a few biters coming over to see what's going on. It probably Probably won't be too serious. Um, but yes, he's he's claimed us a lot of extra territory all, all the way up here, so that could be could be useful. He's got, as I say, got the uh, copper mines in, and he's put in what we call the, the sentry walls along here. So these are the ones that probably won't they'll they'll, they'll be able to defeat a sort of an odd inquisitive biter that comes over to have a look at things and is perhaps looking for somewhere to establish a new nest, but they won't be able to defeat a a, a, a proper attack from a load of biters, which is why it's important to keep the pollution inside the, inside the walls. Uh, they, but they are, but but the reason they're there is because they're per they're perfectly capable of providing a warning if a biter attack does happen. We get the alerts popping up down here and the bleep bloop noises as they chew on the walls and things, and then we can go over and go, okay, this there's a problem over here. How can we deal with it? Is it dealt with by ro by rolling an artillery train up here and shelling whichever nest dared to come out and attack us, or do we actually need to turn this into a proper defensive wall with a with two or three layers of turrets along it? But yeah, so that's um. Go, but that's that's given us, as I say, lots of extra room. He's he's walled it off around the edge. That's that's an artillery station. So these things, you can put an artillery train in there and just shell everything. Um, interestingly, these ones seem to have survived that. Presumably, he was only trying to expand into this this area. Um, but yeah, it allows you to then go out and do a bit of shelling and be relatively safe. Now, it's in quite interesting shape we've got here. So we've got this bit all the way around and down here. But there's this sort of bit here that feels like it's in the middle, almost in the middle of the base, but we haven't uh, liberated it yet. So maybe at some point in the future, somebody will whack a wall across here and across here and just free up this area. But I mean, we're not short of space. We're not short of resources. We're not short of any, certainly not short of any of the resources that are in here because that's what raw rare metals. Although there's an iron patch there and there's a massive copper patch there. So, and no, that's not iron. But stone as well, yeah. So there's going to be a bit more, um, a bit more stuff out there to uh, to, to, to get, I, get I, I suspect. Right, so that covers everything Mark's been up to. I hope you're enjoying the videos. If you are, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you you, you see the next one. And because it's well, it's it's very useful to to the to boosting my boosting the, uh, the how well the channel is doing. So I would very much appreciate it if if everybody who watches the video subscribed. And that way you can make sure you don't miss next week's videos and so on. Um, just because there'll always be new content on the channel. It's it. it, it I, I like to release lots and lots of videos. <laughs> And so, that brings us on to the sensitive topic of Mike. So what's he been up to today? Or today, what's he been up to in the last in the last stream? Well, it turns out these uh, copper mines up here were his doing. He, he came up and built those, so well done there. Thank you for that. We do need that. And I believe he's also built an additional um, stone mine over here in the west. That'll be this one here. You can tell you can sort of tell when a mine is brand new, because the uh, the drills go basically all the way out 
be, only just go out beyond the edge of the patch. Uh, so if you look at one that's been, this one that's been here for ages, for example, you can see there's a huge area around the edge where there are there's, there's mining drills, but there's no actual resource because all of that's been picked up. There's just this little patch of 300,000 in the middle that's still that's still actually being mined, and so this 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 mine is now running really quite slowly. But if we look up here, then you can see the uh, the drills are only just outside the patch because it's quite new. Yeah, it'll have pulled up. There'll be so there'll be probably be a few around the edge that have, have run out of resources or very nearly. That one's only got 52 stone left that it can find. Um, but most and oh no, that one's got 9,000. Yeah, but most but generally they've all got quite a lot available. And so because there's so many of them pulling the resource up, we've got quite a lot of it flowing out and everything is full. So. Yes, a new, a new stone mine out here. It's got the standard um, outposting system working here where we're pulling in the um, uh, the filters, pumping them around the uh, round iron here in order to absorb all the pollution. And that is working pretty nicely. A little bit of it was allowed to escape before that system actually got up and working. But, you know, that happens if you're not quite careful enough. So we'll um, not worry about that too much. And yes, it, once again, we've got a lot of desert here, which means this will drift quite a long way before it gets absorbed. But there are a few trees around, so it will probably get um, pulled up eventually. Although these... I don't, I don't know actually. Do you think these are dead trees because they're trees that grow out in a desert and they always look like this, or do you think they've been poisoned from pollution? It's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, that's um, getting us a bit more stone because we were rather short of that last time, um, and not just because of Mark's propensity to uh, go around trying to trying to uh, carpet the entire base in stone bricks, but also just because we're getting through it a lot with a lot of the uh, things we're doing, like like making silicon for making all the circuits, for example. That's a big a big sink for it. And there's another five and a bit million just down here as well. So when this patch starts to run a little bit low, or maybe even sooner than that, we can whack in another mine on this one. It'll mean rerouting this railway a little bit, but that's easy enough. You just pull it down across here and then back up again. Uh, so that's not going to be a worry. And you can stick in a station along here somewhere to, to, pick, to pick up the stone from here. So, yep, that's all going to work uh, quite nicely, I think. Those were Mike's main uh, main achievements uh, in, the, in the last stream, but he did also go out and do lots of little things, because we had, as I was saying, the, the last stream, because we're, we're, we're now sort of running to the point where we're thinking, OK, we're going to draw a line here and call it Series 1. We didn't want to go out and start any new massive builds or anything like that. So we, we, we were just doing sort of little, little, little tweaky bits here and there. <laughs> and looking at, I'm just noticing the pollution around the edge here. You can see, it, you can see it each, each, every so often it grows out a little bit as the as the game extend sort of checks where pollution is supposed to expand to, and then it all gets put, absorbed back up again by the um, by the air filters. That's really good. that's quite interesting to watch. Um, so yes, what did, what 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 else did Mike do? Well, he fixed some he fixed a lot of the problems I was talking about in the previous video. So um, there was a station up here that was playing silly wasp names where the uh, the, the fuel was get. Um, I think the fuel was horribly imbalanced, so basically all of it was in this warehouse over here. So he's put in the standard balancing system that watches to make sure that basically runs these these belts on the way in <coughs> when there's plenty of space inside the uh, in, inside the warehouse, and runs the output belts when there's a decent amount of stuff inside the warehouse. And doing both of those means that it keeps the whole thing uh, reasonably well balanced. And I gather that, and I, I do, I do under, I do hear from people that are telling me that doing this sort of thing with warehouses for unloading trains tends to be a bit expensive on the UPS side should we say so we may start running into problems in the not too distant future with uh, with, with with the rate that the game runs at with with all of this uh, warehousing going on but if that if, if we do start to have serious problems there and I'm, and what we've got at the moment with it dribbling down occasionally to about 57 UPS I'm I'm basically okay with that it's not too serious and if I zoom in on a quiet area then you see we get quite a lot of 60 in there as well so it, it, it's it's not too bad um, he's also been messing around with the logic so it turns out those uh, these these um, things down here that I was talking about before these aren't watching to see if there's enough um, uh, enough modules and then stopping the construction what this system is supposed to do actually that's that's sort of wrong what this system is supposed to be doing is watching the quantity of blue circuits that are available in the whole world I think and then cutting off the production over here if we start to run out of the circuits is that right let's have a look so over here we will see that Oh no, no, he's, he's gone over to what I was what I was suggesting. So if there's less than 2,000, then this will run and allow us to be making these uh, modules. Now at the moment there is significant. Well, there's only a tick on there. I oh, goodness knows what he's done here. <laughs> is this actually tied into the stations down here? Yes. So we've got 168 modules apparently. Um, but then this is getting filtered through, yeah, this is getting filtered through these combinators over here. So that signal is not actually making it through onto this onto this uh, cable up here. So, I mean, that's, it's it is still not doing anything. But the general idea behind it, oh no, sorry, oh no, no, it's being fed up here, perhaps. What are we doing here? Yes, ah, here we go, right. 
Yes. So the system is watching to see when there's if there's if there's enough of all of the types of modules, then it will cut off the the flow of the green circuits into the system. So it'll turn it off that way, um, and the red circuits, but not the blue circuits. This seems. To be honest, this seems a little bit odd. Um, I think what he's got going on up here, where he's monitoring for the number of um, tier three um, modules that are actually have actually been made, and, and stopping this when it's when it's happy, is probably a better system. It's just not configured for that at the moment. So, uh, whatever. <laughs> He's done a load of tidyings as well. So uh, we keep talking about the warehouses of shame. And that's these warehouses down he here. Where miscellaneous stuff gets dumped. And you can see they're yellow warehouses. So when the bots uh, bring in... When the, when the logistics bots or, or when any of the bots find stuff and go, okay, I don't know where to put this, they'll come along and they'll drop it in these warehouses. And that means that it gradually nonsense accumulates in them. So you can see we've got all of these steam engines, we've got all the all the um, furnaces that we're not using anymore. For some reason there's loads of pulverizers, there's some miscellaneous ingredients and things, and spare weapons, just generally lots and lots of junk. And so every so often, Mike will go, oh, for goodness sake, and come along here and try and tidy this up a bit. Now, uh, to an extent, some of the stuff, like the uh, these inserters, will get taken away and, and used by the uh, by the bots when they're doing a build. So, in theory, these will eventually find their way back into circulation. But there's a lot of stuff in here that's that's just in a wrong place and won't ever get used up, like all of this coke that they were spending some... But they put a bit of effort into tidying up in the last, ep in the last uh, episode or stream, or whatever we're calling it. There's a load of ammunition in here as well, medipacks. These rocket control units should be taken out of here and put back into the uh, into the rocket building systems over on the other side. These science packs should be taken out. And actually, the basic tech cards we don't really use. I don't think we use anymore, so those are probably never going to get used up. But these red ones certainly could be used up. So you see what I mean? There's a lot of stuff that builds up in these that we... I mean, was was useful at the time. We want, but we, we ended up in someone's inventory, inventory, probably mine. They wanted to get rid of it, so they just dumped it into the into the logistics system, and then a lot of it finds its way over into here. And eventually, somebody will come along and maybe tidy it up a bit. And that's what. And uh, Mike has been doing a, a fair amount of that, so there's a lot less pressure on these than there was before. So it, things are much better. Certainly, it's still just a little bit. There's just still a bit of junk hanging around here that we need, needs to be got rid of. So yeah, he's, he's done a bit of that, and it's it's helping. He described his um, efforts though as saying that he's realised it's impossible to empty the warehouses of shame faster than they're filled. Uh, so he had a bit of a cry about it because it was a bit of a a bit of a nonsense and a bit of a, a bit of a, a thankless task that would never would basically never end. So you know, well, he's a, <laughs> it's good to give him a Sisyphean um, task from time to time just to keep him out of trouble. He's reconnected the power to the spaceport. That's fine. So down down here these were I guess using a bit of power so because we had power problems this was an area that could be cut off without anything mattering he's also come along and put a lot of the stuff that's supposed to be going out to Taishikuten into the Taishikuten rocket so these this raw immer site these uh, core fragments these things should all be I, I they should all have been left on Taishikuten I obviously came back with some in my inventory I went oh dear and threw it out into the chest of shame and this is why he tells me off about it so you know <laughs> I still need to go through down here and sort out that um that list on of things on Taishikuten that need stuff. So all of those things need to be put into the into the rocket so it can take them off next time it goes over there. But uh, that's something I, I'll, I'll do that at some point. It's on the to-do list. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> He also helped out a bit with Mark, uh, helped help Mark out with uh, producing the new power station up here. So, great, thank you for that. Uh, built some stuff for Tristan, because Tristan's still off on Dracket, because he likes playing space exploration remotely, because, um, I don't know, he's a masochist or something. Um, <laughs> or possibly he's slightly more organised than me, so it doesn't, he, doesn't ma he doesn't feel the urge to go over and fiddle with things by hand quite so much. Probably the latter, if we're being honest. Uh, oh, he upgraded the belts over in the uh, core pulverizing area. So in here, these are now. There's now lots of. There's now some blue belts in the middle of here because that was a thing that I commented on last time. Because we've got. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and a couple of little bits of belts feeding into here, and then only um, some feeding out. And there was. And it was clogging up a little bit. And so, this whole system around here is a bit of a mess and a bit weird, if we're being honest. But I mean, it. It kind of works kind of it's just a little bit weird so we've attempted to take off some of the some of the pressure by pulling out the uh, the uranium and the coal here but then we're passing everything through here which means there's still some uranium and coal which needs to be passed out over here um all of these belts can out, output belts and input belts can all be upgraded to blue belts as and when we require so there is is still a fair amount of um upgradability in in, in the system here um but the question is how many belts he's keeping everything balanced between the number of input belts and the number of output belts um 
one belt is always going to be enough for uranium, so we don't really need this second one. So, but but if we had if we had 12 belts going into here, so two sides and then 12 belts coming out, we wouldn't be able to get 12 belts into this one because there's lots of other stuff around it. So, which is why we've, we've also got we're, we're pulling some of the iron ore out this way to take a bit of the pressure off. It, it, it's a bit of a weird system, to be honest. Um, but it's work. It's sort of at the moment it's working, so we don't really want to go and fiddle with it if we can possibly avoid it. I have no idea what this bit of belt here is doing. Uh, nothing by the looks of it, but it's there. I'm not going to fiddle too much. <laughs> um, he also rescued a core mine train. So one of the, presumably one of the core mine stations had a, a glitch on its output or a signal in the wrong place or something like that. So he managed to rescue one of those. So that's that's good. That's meant we were able to have all of these trains. Sort of bimbling around merrily and, and and dealing with all of the uh, dropping off all the core fragments i'm still quite impressed that this hasn't jammed up despite there being five trains and room for four but um i guess the uh the core mines are, are digging up the, the uh, core fragments fast enough that there's never there's never a chance for all five of the trains to end up back here so you know it's, it's, it's pretty safe so that brings you up to date on the main doings. Um, sadly, I have to report that our um, our our, street, our our run of sessions without anybody dying has now come to an end. Uh, Mike managed to die twice to uh, well to, to worms and biters. So basically, he was going out doing combat apparently and wasn't doing it well enough. <laughs> so I think he was helping Mike uh, Mark with the uh, the clearing out of the general northern area and. I guess just didn't move fast enough when a, when a worm started attacking him or a biter started attacking him. So yep, another another two deaths to, for, for, uh, to report for Mike. So he's still well in the lead, um, with Mark in a uh, a fairly distant second place on that one. <laughs> and, and but but it's, it's notable that um, a significant proportion of um, Mark's deaths have been. To, in fact, the major the mi a minority of um, Mark's deaths have been due to the aliens. Most of them have been due to player inflicted things so he's had four to cargo wagons one to a locomotive and one to radiation i believe all of those have been mark um and of course there was uh, mike's death to science in the uh, a few runs back when we tested dropping um, delivery cannon capsules on his head to see what would happen so that was fun so that brings us pretty much to the end of the episode now as i said at the beginning we are start we are ending series one at this point but don't worry series two will commence almost immediately so next week there won't be any streams because i'm going to be busy in the, in the theater doing doing a show so um, if you're in if you're in the surrey area in the in south of the uk uh, please come along and see us do the adams family it'll be great fun um but it does mean i won't be along to play uh, Factorio or Dyson Sphere program during during next week, so I'm afraid I just, yes I won't be won't be around for those. However, the videos will continue. There'll be a, a GTA video on Thursday, as is fairly is, is seems to be normal at the moment. And at the week at the weekend, I intend to release a sort of a summary video of everything that's happened in Series One of, of of this. So we'll be talking about how how we got started, how things have been going, what what the challenges have done, where where we've been, what we've done. Just give you a general summary of everything that's happened. And I shall try not to talk for too long while I do that, because <laughs> I do have a habit of going on a little bit with some of these longer episodes. So that'll be coming out next weekend. I say no streams, but the week after we should be kicking off with series two, where we shall start looking into doing the the tiers of sciences. So um, you've got if we if we look in here at the um pack there we go yes so you've got you've got the ground-based uh, data card science packs and you've got ro you've got space production and utility which all have to be done up in space as you saw me doing over the last couple of weeks um, and then after that you've got the tiers of space sciences so astro one to four bio one to four energy one to four and material one to four and possibly matter. I don't know quite where that fits in. It sounds it sounds deep spacey, but we'll, we shall see. So the next series is going to be us getting started on these. We uh, we're going to be do doing a lot of redesigning of the uh, of the space station because it needs some improvements um, for the f and future proofing and stuff like that. And there's going to be a lot of tech that's going to allow us to make some improvements there. So um, I think I can say without any spoilers, the first target is going to be getting space trains up and running because you you've got to have trains. Up. So we'll be working on that. Otherwise, well, we shall um, we shall see how it goes. We shall see what we decide we want to do next, and uh, and work towards it. So uh, that'll be a week on Monday, um, the the normal time of 7:30 p.m. UK time. Come along then and uh, and see us getting on with it. And of course, please remember remember to check out the stream sponsor, which is treefoil.be. If you need a Factorio or Minecraft or Mindustry or Seven Day Style, various various gaming servers, check them out. Use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, and you can get 20% off your first month. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.